I mean, I guess the headline could have included the words, but I swear we're not lying. Shy of that, though, it's hard to imagine a bigger admission of guilt. See, a, a big part of my job is consuming Christian media. I mean, we watch their movies, listen to their music, read their books, watch their TV shows, follow their blogs, listen to their sermons, subscribe to their newsletters, and read their news sites. And it was on that last one where I saw this amazing headline for an op-ed. Quote, Three Reasons to Not Ask God for a Sign by one Mark Ballinger. And of course, the honest answer is obviously because God doesn't exist and that fucks up our whole thing, right? Like the article might as well just be three different gifts of Tweety Birds saying, I lose more Christians that way. But don't worry, this op-ed has no intention of being honest. So before he even gets to the bullet points, the author shifts the blame. It's not that he doesn't want you to ask God for a sign, right? It's not like his job depends on you just continuing to accept this bullshit. Instead, he offers up three reasons that God doesn't want you to pray for a sign. And then he launches into his three reasons, which amount to one, you'd probably fuck it up. Two, you'd be too stupid to know even if he did. And three, you don't deserve a sign, you miserable piece of shit. Now, obviously, I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but that is the gist of what the dude says. He starts off by distinguishing between signs of guidance, right, which is where you ask God what you should do, and then you listen to yourself thinking, and then you pretend that an all-knowing magical ghost just endorsed your fucking decision. And those signs are perfectly fine to ask for. The problematic ones are the requests that are of the, oh, yeah, if you're so extant variety. See, he calls those ones supernatural signs. And even though he makes it clear that God totally could do those if he wanted to, you're not supposed to ask him to because that would demonstrate a lack of faith. Because you, know, you know how, like, honest people don't let you ask for evidence? It's like that. Now, granted, he made a list of three things and he used bold font and everything, but that's the only point in the entire op-ed. He dresses it up a little bit, but for a second point, he just reiterates the same shit about not doubting God and backs it up with a few more Bible quotes this time. But he does offer an alternative here, and I think it's pretty telling. He phrases his second point as, quote, don't ask God for a sign. Ask for eyes to see the signs that God is already sending, end quote. And, and, and if you think about it, the only point of this is to lower the bar so much that even a non-existent God can clear it. I mean, if you're a former believer, think about that moment. Right. Think about that crisis of faith moment where you begged God to show you a sign that he was listening, any sign that he existed at all. And think about how little you were willing to accept in that moment. I mean, you weren't asking him to moon you over a mountaintop like he did for Moses's buddies. Right. You'd have accepted a parting of the clouds that the sun suddenly shined through. You'd have accepted a, a brightly colored bird suddenly alighting on a nearby perch. You'd have accepted a strong fucking breeze. And what this dude is telling you is to ask for less. God already sent you the signs. You were just too arrogant or prideful or dumb or whatever the fuck he's accusing you of being to see those signs. Now, if you ask me, that's on God, right? I mean, if I'm in charge of designing the signage for your venue and nobody can tell what the signs mean or indeed if they even are signs, I'm a shit sign maker and I should be fired. But the practical effect is to lower the bar from a sudden and auspicious breeze right now to a sudden breeze at any nonspecific point in the past or future. It's a, it's a way of roping the whole endless scope of mundanity into the realm of acceptable answers for God. You don't need a bird to show up in that moment. The very fact that birds exist should be enough evidence of God. And then he wraps up by pointing out that you probably don't even deserve the existence of birds. His final point is that, quote, when you pray for a supernatural sign, you are often rejecting the responsibility God has placed on you to steward the life he's given you, end quote. In other words, it's not up to God to prove his existence to you. It's up to you to prove God's existence to God. God, I guess. I don't I don't know. It doesn't make any fucking sense. The point is, that if you ask God for a sign and he doesn't give you one, it's because you did something wrong. 
It's not because God doesn't exist or isn't capable of providing one. And it's certainly not that you're being lied to. It's because of an innate character flaw in you. With Christianity, it's always because of an innate character flaw in you. It's not that God is lacking. It's that you are. And if you're lucky, maybe God will forgive you for him being functionally indistinguishable from non-existent.